this is Adam Taylor uh, t coming to you to talk about live stream and how to use it for your class for snow day PD for cl in class use and also for re test reviews in the evenings um, the purpose of this program or a live stream for at least for education in my in my opinion is for you to have the students have a live video feed of you talking and you can also share your screen so if you're showing a PowerPoint you can rotate between uh, the live feed of your face and uh, what you're showing on your computer screen now whether or not it's on your face or on the computer screen there will always be an audio feed from your microphone so you can narrate the PowerPoint or they can just see you talking whichever you prefer now if you're shy and don't like to be on camera uh, first of all get over it because <laughs> this is a great tool Second of all, you don't have to be on camera to be talking to your students and share with them information. So this program is good for that. And uh, so if you're camera shy, you don't have to worry about it. Anyway, <clears throat> so how it can be used. Um, let me give you a quick demo here. I guess it's not very good, so we'll kind of skip over that. Anyway, in this shot here, you see me. I'm actually meeting with my students, doing a class review or a test review the night before a test, um, and they're asking me questions, and I'm answering them. There is not a video feed of your students, so it's not a face-to-face -face, uh, video talk or Skype or whatever you want to call it. However, they can respond to what you say, or they can ask questions via a live chat. I'll demonstrate that um, right now. Actually, let me get uh, to that screen. Okay, so this is what your students would see. This may be a bit confusing because you're going to see my mouth moving. This is a live recording via Ustream. Yeah, there's a few second delay, but um, anyway, hopefully this makes sense. So your students will see your face, and if you if you go ahead and share your screen, they'll see what's on your screen for PowerPoints and whatnot. So the way they are going to participate is to enter the chat here. Um, so there's a live chat. Let me, uh, yeah. Anyway, so they type in a response or a question, and then they're going to click on Say, and it's going to pop up. Now, if they've never been on here before, before their comment will pop up, it'll a little screen will come up that says uh, put in your nickname. Uh, so just tell them to put in their first name or last name or whatever. Click save, and then you'll be able to see their questions and comments and responses. Um, yeah, so anyway, uh, go ahead and pause the video for a second, and if you have any questions about what we've talked, what I've mentioned so far, please write them down so you can email them to me later so I can answer them. So I'm going to take a little break. Alright, so if, if you had any questions, hopefully you wrote them down. If not, pause the video again and write them down real quick. And uh, now let's continue on. So students might be typing in questions here. You do not need to type in your responses. In fact, if you typed in your responses, that would be less effective. Because when they type in a question, you can answer through your voice and through what you show on your screen. Uh, so if, if they ask a question about a particular topic in your subject and you know there's a great website, you can go to that website and show them the answer. Another way I like to use this is I say, okay, or no, if a student has a good question that I, I don't know the answer off the top of my head, or I know that there's some good websites out there that will help us with that, I'll tell the students, I say, okay, go find this website and uh, send us the link. So all they would have to do is um, go to a website or do a search for a website and they will be able to share that link in the chat. And I'm going to demonstrate that now. I'm copying the link from my, from my grant and I'm going to post that. And then students can click on that same link. I say, okay guys, the one that uh, Adam sent us was a great link. Let's everybody go there and we'll talk about what's on the screen. So you can have the students help find the content you need to answer other students' questions, which is really nice. Um, all right, so now <clears throat> let's.
let's uh, pause again if you need to write down a question just push pause and you can pause at any time you don't have to wait for my cue and uh, restart it and uh, we will find a quick pause all right so what do you need to do to get started on uh, livestream.com well it's actually pretty easy you need to go to livestream.com and I'm already here and then you're gonna click sign up when you sign up uh, you're gonna talk about broadcasting so you're gonna click broadcasting and then it's gonna take you uh, to the name of the channel you want to make and a short name and then you're gonna say that you want the free version so I'll take you through a couple more steps I'm not gonna go through all that um, now, but it, it's pretty basic. But if you do have any questions, you can call me anytime and or email me, and I'll make sure to answer those questions. I believe we are going to be setting up a a uh, broadcast station that will have each will have several channels, one for each of the major topics that we'll be presenting through the AP Snow Day online class. Anyway, so don't worry about that too much. Um, now, when you get logged in get your sign in you'll need to scroll down to the very bottom of the page at the bottom of the page there's a tool you want to download it's called uh, Procaster and Procaster is just down here at the bottom you see that there Procaster you're gonna click on that it's gonna take you to a, a, a new website or a, another part of the website and you're gonna download the appropriate software if you have a Mac download the Mac software if you have a if you have a um, PC or Microsoft computer, then download uh, the Windows program right there. All right, so now to get the program to work, you also need to have a webcam and a microphone. Now, many laptops, new laptops nowadays, have a built-in microphone and webcam, so you may not have to worry about that. But if you don't have one, you can get one at Walmart pretty cheap. There's some Logitech ones there for about 20 bucks. Um, if that Walmart doesn't have one, go to a Kmart or another Walmart or something, and you'll be able to find one. If, if you pay more than twenty dollars, unless you're trying to get really fancy, you're, you're paying too much. So if they don't have one that's about twenty bucks, then that's because they're out of them. All right, so <clears throat> now we're ready to open uh, Procaster. Let's say that you've already done the download and and you've already logged in. This is what you're going to need to do. go to your start menu click on all programs and come up to where you see live stream producer if it's not up there it'll be down here somewhere uh, and there it is live stream producer click on that and then you're gonna open live stream pro procaster I don't know why I said producer anyway when you click on that this little thing here is gonna pop up this little window and this is how you get started with your broadcast and it's very simple uh, you make sure that the webcam is selected and then other than that all you have to do really is push go live so then this window pops up and uh, all right now you notice that there's a little toolbar that popped up across the bottom here I'm going to take you through each part each part of that toolbar at least the parts that you need to understand <coughs> um, so currently in this left corner you can see my face and I know it's really small but it's there and that's what the person who goes to your channel is going to see now, there's a link you can give to people to go to your channel for instance for me my channel is livestream.com slash Taylor Psy tailored SCI a channel that's all you have to do is share that with them and, and I'll, uh, I'll explain that as well all right so let me again explain or start to explain what you see on your screen here uh, this is the toolbar and this toolbar is not visible to people watching your channel even if you are on the screen so let me switch to the screen I'll show you so now if you'll notice this is a copy of this so this little window here this is what they see on my screen they don't see the toolbar and they don't see this chat procaster thing that I'll explain in a minute and I know this looks really busy 
don't worry about it. In fact, I'm just going to minimize the chat. And so this is the Procaster website for live stream, just advertising their, their wares. In fact, let me go to a different one. Okay, yeah, so here's my site with me and my graduate fellow that works, not mine, but a graduate fellow that works from MTSU named Tiffany Saul and my students. So here's my website that I use for my students. All right, now coming across, this tells you your time you've been recording and broadcasting. It says that the stream's working well. Uh, this other information really isn't important. And here's how you stop the recording or and the broadcast. The mixer is some fancy stuff that you don't need to worry about. I don't understand it either. It's about sound and some other stuff, but don't worry about it. Then over here is where you choose between either your camera view, notice how it's switched here, or your screen view. Um, one of the ways I use this is that if I need to set up something on my screen that I don't necessarily want the students to see until I'm ready to show them, then I will put it on camera. They'll see me. I'll set up my screen changes or go to a different website or whatever, and then I'll switch back. Now, you also have the option of showing your face as well as the screen. So for those of you who really like to see yourself or know that you're being seen, then, um, then that's what you can do. Okay. Uh, and then there's 3D, and uh, that's just funky stuff you don't need to worry about. And then there's zoom in and zoom out, and this is a really effective tool. Um, I'm going to zoom in, and you should see these green bars start to come in on the side of your screen, and you can adjust those. So basically, if you watch down here while I zoom in, you'll notice notice that it's centering on whatever I've selected. So if I'm showing a YouTube video, then the students will only see what I have selected in that box. So if you want to get fancy, you can use that. If, if that's not a concern for you, then don't, then don't worry about it. You can click on the green tabs, you can move them around. I know this sounds complicated, but trust me, you don't have to worry about any of this, and I'll give a super simplified version of this training later as well. <coughs> All right. All right, let's pause for a second, pause the video, and uh, if you have any questions, write them down. All right, so what I've done here, and you see a change, I've gone to one of my presentations that I use with my students about sponges. Uh, sponge is a type of animal that lives in the ocean. Um, and some of you use it to clean your house. But anyway, um, so if I'm sharing with them, for instance, on a test review, then this is what they're going to see. <clears throat> so I'm going to say, okay, sponges, where are they? Okay, the scientific name for sponge is periphera, which means holes. Here's, an, here's a picture of a, of a dead sponge. Here's a picture of a live sponge. Metazoans, protozoans, and whatnot. So, are we metazoans or protozoans? We are metazoans because we're multicellular. Okay, so while I'm giving my presentation, maybe there's a question that pops up over here in the chat. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share a couple of tidbits of information, ask them a question, or ask if there are any questions, and then wait for a second over here and watch for something to pop up. If they put in a question, then I'm going to answer it verbally or with my screen to make sure they understand. I'm not going to respond on the chat unless I'm trying to post a website for them to go to. Because when I post it in here on the chat in this little feed, then they can actually visit the website that I put in there. It makes it easy for everybody to get to the same spot. Um, anyway, so I'm going to continue. Alright, so here's an example of a sponge and, and what it and its basic body shape. They have special choanocyte cells which help to uh, get water flow through the sponge. And this is a flagellum that wiggles back and forth and moves the water along. Okay, so while I'm giving that instruction again, if I pause for a minute, I say have any questions, if nothing pops up, um, then I keep moving. The the really important thing about pausing between what I'm saying is so I can check and see if there are any questions that have popped up while I've been talking and then I can answer those questions before I move on. Uh, that way I don't get too ahead of myself
myself and, and uh, mess up, you know, what I'm trying to share with the students. Um, okay. All right, so students will be putting in questions, and they may actually have their own conversation going on in the background. They may be asking me questions, and I may not notice it right away, and then another student can answer them, because the, so they can see what other students are posting here, which is great, because then you can have a back channel um, answer and question and response going on while you're teaching uh, using this uh, your screen here um, so they can answer each, each other's questions which helps move it along and then uh, if you pause once in a while you can see the questions as well and if they haven't been answered you can answer them another great way this can be used is you can have another teacher in the chat while you're running the main discussion and they can be watching to make sure that no important questions are missed uh, they can actually respond as well uh, to those questions, which is, is also really nice. And all they have to do is be in the chat room while you're presenting. So that, that can be a great tool. All right, so that's the basic rundown. Um, I'm not going to share this with anybody until you've been to the training because I don't want because seeing this first off may be a little overwhelming, but in, in the training it'll be slower. Anyway, if you have any questions, please contact me, adam.taylor at mmps.org. You can also uh, text me or call me at 615-697-9676, and I'll be glad to help. So hopefully this was helpful, and I'll talk to you later.